Let's go Chuck, Claire, and David Newton. Chuck Howard, NASCAR Media Group. Kevin, uh, when the dust settles here, we start uh, hitting some tracks that uh, are pretty racy. Uh, over the years, Richmond, you've won there. I think your average finish is ninth. What is it about Richmond that uh, you always seem to be contending for the victory there? Yeah, it's been a good track for us, and, and uh, you know, over the past couple of years, um, you know, it's been good for us as well. I think last year we wrecked in the first one uh, with a flat left retire, but, you know, it's just a poor racetrack that's been um, kind of goes with everything that we do from my driving style to the cars to, to everything that, that goes with it. So uh, I enjoy racing there. You can run the top, you can run the bottom, you can run the middle. It's just a, it's a fun racetrack from a driver's standpoint because it gives you options. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's just, a, it's just been a good place for us. Okay, we're going to go Claire, David, Marty Smith. Claire Belang, Sirius NASCAR Radio. We could end a little bit of the speculation here. Uh, a, it seems like you're really not worried about this, that you have opportunities and there's no press for time. Uh, is that what we're getting? You know, you seem to be really not worried about all of it. And B, are you talking with guys like Tony Stewart as well as, as Richard Childress? I mean, right now we're just, we're really trying to focus on kind of what we're doing, uh, to be honest with you, and, and I haven't. I'm just really not, I'm trying, I've told you guys from the beginning, I'm really trying not to get in the middle of it like I have in the past. Um, you know, when that time comes, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's anything pressing time-wise um, for anybody, whether it's, a, whether it's um, you know, the team or at, at RCR or myself. Um, you know, I think that rightfully so, I think that's the, the opportunity that we have to try to work out first. Um, and I, I think that that's, you know, like I say, that's where we've been headed uh, over the past several months as far as talks and things like that. I think it's only fair that, that, we, that, we, that we work on, on all that first, and, and um, so that's, that's what we've been doing. All right, we've got David Newton, Marty, and Al. Yeah, Kevin, um, you said some business-to-business -business things happen at, behind the scenes, I guess, with the Shell thing. You, are you talking about some agreement? Penske and his dealerships and trying to work things like that out. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Like I say, I don't know all the all the details of, of all that. So, you know, those would be great questions for Richard. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, I mean, the last couple of times you come here, you've seen cars going airborne. Are you satisfied that NASCAR has done what they can to, to try to fix that? And as a driver, is it mentally affect you? Do you think about the, the possibility of that when you're out there? I, I don't think, you know, from a driver's perspective, once you get going, you don't you don't think about that that kind of stuff I mean you just go in there and it's, there's so much going on here that you know you're you're looking backwards to go forward you're you know you're two three four wide uh, pretty much all day so uh, this particular race you don't you don't think about any of that stuff uh, until you go home during the week and you go back and watch the race and kind of see how it all played out but I think if you look at the you know what they've done with the cars with the with the spoiler um, with the new fins on on the sides of the cars and uh, really trying to pay attention to to where the speeds needed to be um, at the test and the restrictor plates and things that they came back with, you know, they're obviously that's their that was their number one concern was the safety of the cars going upside down and and it may happen again. Nobody knows. Um, you know, I think everybody's done as much research uh, that they can to to do the best that they can with the with the cars and and uh, the scenarios that they feel like that they can put the cars in in the wind tunnels and and things like that. But there's it's like I tell you guys all the time, there's nothing that you can do to simulate 43 cars on the racetrack pushing and shoving, and, and just things just happen uh, differently than, than anything in a, in a fixed environment uh, um, that, that you can put anything in a, in, in a situation like on the racetrack. So it's just, it's just one of those things where you have to uh, do the best that you can with the tools that you have to, to make things uh, the best that you can to, to try to prevent things from happening. And I feel strongly that they've... You know, I think just with the, the things that they've done to the car are really good, but the things that they've been trying to do to the car the, and, and the just out-of-the-box things that, that they've been working on are, are really good as well. So you just have to keep plugging along, and they're in the same situation that we are, is trying to develop the cars to go faster. They're trying to make them safer, and, and they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars, and I think that's uh, that'd be a great story for somebody to go in and follow NASCAR on a, on a weekly basis and, and see the, how no. much time they actually spend on... on not, not a good idea. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Because you guys do spend millions of yeah, dollars. Open doors over to R&D yeah. Center. Come on over. Okay. Marty? Uh, Marty Smith, ESPN. Kevin, you talked about how when you show up here, you're either going to have a great day or a horrible day. So when you drive through the tunnel for the first time, every time you come here, what is your initial thought? when you show up at the racetrack here. It's exactly that. 
you know, it's like it's like throwing your money down on red or black. You spin the wheel, and wherever it winds up, it winds up, and you either you walk off pissed or you walk off with a smile on your face and a pocket full of money. It's it's really no different. I mean, you just you roll through, and and you you're either red or black this week.